All right, at the outset, I said before we tackle and understand fading, I need to do just some quick review of some basic concepts from digital communications. So this might all be review for you. Um, if so, you can just go ahead and skip this, but uh, this will hopefully just put us on the same page. The first thing I need to uh, review is just the basics of up and down conversion. So recall that whenever you have an RF communication system, usually the information is processed in what's called complex baseband. That means in frequency it's centered around zero and has some bandwidth, say, which is W. But of course, the real signal that's actually transmitted over the uh, wireless channel from the antenna is a real valued signal in passband, meaning it's centered around some carrier frequency, which I've denoted here FC. And up and down conversion really is just a process from going from complex baseband to real passband and back, and is often also just called mixing. So just the mathematics of how that works out, again, this is just review from your digital communications class, is that the complex baseband signal you can think of as either two real valued signals, which they typically call I and Q, or the in phase and quadrature part, or you can rep think of it as a single complex signal, which is just they, these are just the real and the imaginary parts of that. Both ways are totally equivalent, so you can pick. In real passband, you get to that real passband signal by multiplying by a complex exponential and then taking the real value part. This is, of course, not what actually happens. I'll show you what physically happens in this, but that's just mathematically how that transformation works. And then you can get back the complex baseband signal by multiplying by the negative of that frequency and then doing some low pass filtering. Remember that under this convention, you need this multiplication by two. Of course, in reality, there will be other gains, so you will end up with a scaled version of the original transmitted signal. All right, that was the mixing or up and down conversion in time domain. It's sometimes easier to think about it in frequency domain. So in that case, your baseband signal is generally centered around zero and has some bandwidth, let's call it W. Can think of this as a two-sided bandwidth and the meaning that it's limited to W by two on each side and when we take the signal in passband what we're doing is we're just basically shifting it um, uh, to center around FC and there'll be another image of this signal around minus FC remember that for any real valued signal it's the mirror image around uh, zero axis and just by the convention that I'm using here you'll get the scaling factor by two. All right, so here's a picture of an actual discrete IQ um, mixer. So this one I just grabbed from this uh, distributor here. So you see it has four ports. One is the LO or local oscillator, and that's usually a sine or square wave at the carrier frequency. And then it has these two uh, ports here, which are for the I and Q signals, and then it generates this uh, RF signal here. And then usually the data sheet will have some uh, parameters which describe the frequency range and maybe some non-idealities. I hopefully, uh, at the end of this uh, class, might talk about some of these non-ideal effects of mixers and how they affect your design, both for discrete IQ mixers, but more importantly in the integrated circuit versions of these. All right, but for now, this just gives you a kind of physical view of what's happening with a mixer. All right, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is what's called the based band equivalent channel. So suppose we have at the transmitter, if we have some signal and it's up converted at some frequency and it goes over a real pass band channel and then we down convert it. The important um, aspect for digital communications is that we can look at the mapping from that complex baseband transmitted signal to that complex baseband received signal as an equivalent baseband channel. So basically you can just eliminate the effect of this up and down conversion. And there's a very simple formula, which if you take digital communications, you will uh, have covered, and which relates the equivalent, uh, which relates the passband channel to the baseband equivalent channel. And it's basically just this, which just means that all you do to compute the equivalent baseband channel is you shift 
that pass band channel uh, down by uh, the carrier frequency. So I'll give you some examples uh, shortly. All right, and the most important simple case is just looking at the case of a delay. So let's say that in the real pass band channel, your frequency response or your impulse response is has some gain and some delay. So if you remember, that means the impulse response is a delta function and that delay is tau. So um, what that means from the uh, what we had from the previous slide is that the equivalent baseband channel is also a delay uh, with a tau, but it has a complex phase rotation and the amount of that phase rotation is dependent on the delay and the carrier frequency. Now just to prove this, let's do the following. So if we had our passband channel uh, impulse response, its frequency response would just be the Fourier transform of this, which will just be a complex exponential. And then if I take the baseband channel response, all I do is I shift that to the left, which is I just get this formula here. But all you do notice here is that I can look at this e to the minus 2 pi j f c tau, and that's just a constant. So I can pull that out and then take the inverse Fourier transform and get back this delta. So the upshot of all of this is that if you have a delay and gain in passband, you have a delay and a gain and a phase rotation in baseband. And the amount of that phase rotation will be proportional to the product of the carrier frequency and the delay. All right, um, one last thing that I want to just cover before we continue on is the issue of synchronization. So again, this is probably or hopefully covered in your digital communications class, but let's just review it here. So suppose we have some transmitted signal, all right, and it lasts for some time, and it has some, uh, let's say, uh, amplitude C, and it goes through some delay and gain in your channel. So let's say then it would arrive at the receiver at some delay, which I'm denoting tau. And in the complex baseband, it will have this phase rotation here because of the uh, complex baseband effect of the delay. So what you want to do at the receiver is somehow try to um, remove this effect of this delay and this tau. So typically what you do is you try to estimate that delay and then try to shift the signal to correct that. And that is what we're doing here, because we say what I'm going to do is I have my received signal R of t, I'm going to somehow estimate that gain tau, and then by shifting it, I can recover the original signal. I'll still end up with this complex gain, but then if I can estimate that, I can correct that as well. This part is called time synchronization, and we'll revisit this topic in the context of wireless in a couple of units, and we'll also discuss how to estimate this phase rotation, and that will be part of what we will call um, equalization. Now, one um, other thing that I want to uh, cover is I've shown that delay causes phase changes. Another important um, imperfection, if you like, that causes uh, phase changes are frequency errors. So typically you have your transmitter and it has some local oscillator and you give that local oscillator the carrier frequency and with some phase. And you do the same at the receiver, but these are typically not exactly equal because they're being generated, for example, by two different crystals and those two crystals will always have some um, relative error. So if you work out the math, and it's not that hard, what happens if you receive the signal and you do this down conversion with some errors is that you get the transmitted signal, but there's an error term, and it depends on the difference between these two um, frequencies and the difference between these two phases. And that frequency change here will basically cause a phase rotation over time equal to the difference between these. All right. That in mind, I just want you to try to simulate some basics of these single path delay channels. Um, the first problem, and again, all the problems are on the GitHub site with the links below. Just want you to plot the frequency response of a delay channel. That should be super easy. And then I want you to plot the channel response over time with some frequency errors. So after this, I hope that you understand looking at 
channels with a single delay and that will let us talk about in the next section what happens when you have multiple paths with multiple different delays.